good day friends it is me hl mod tech and i have got an idea for a tinkercad 3d printed marble maze so let's get cracking friends step one is to visit tinkercad i always choose sign in with google once they're there we're going to make a new 3d design i'm going to name it marble maze and i'm going to put 3d print if you want to put your initials after it you can Friends, we're gonna build this with an amazing shape we can search for. It is called the soft box. When you type soft, it'll show up. I highly recommend you favorite it. Once you do favorite something, just to let you know, it'll always be right here for easier retrieval. Friends, we're gonna type numbers in these boxes. I'm gonna tell you 55 and 75 are the numbers I want. I'm gonna make my Z 1.5. That'll be how thick this project is gonna be. We're gonna make the bottom first, so we're gonna take the wall, and since we went 55, we're gonna stretch this out into the 50s. Bingo, we have got a solid wall. Now we're gonna do Control D and move that across, and we're gonna make the area where the marbles, or what I'm gonna use, our airsoft pellets, are gonna land. I'm gonna make the walls of this project two, so it'll be two millimeters all the way around. I'm going to make Z8 so that way there's plenty of room for the ball to roll around in there before it pops out. Speaking of popping out, we need to cut a hole in this. We're going to do that with a basic shape. Bring out the hole. We're going to simply take those two, select them, choose a line. I'm going to choose middle and middle, and we're going to group it so that way there is room for the ball to roll out the back. We're going to make the game board by doing Control D, and we're going to bring this across just so it's clear which is which. I'm going to make this one red. Now my 3D printed game is going to be played with an Airsoft BB. So I'm going to hold down Shift, stretch this, and I'm going to type 6 because it's 6 millimeters in size. That's how large they are. If you're making one for a different size ball, simply adjust that. Now I need to put holes in here for the game to work. I'm gonna make a 10 millimeter hole. Check it out if you hold shift and stretch it to any number, you can type 10 and press enter. I'm gonna choose the end of my game to be right over here in this corner. Now I do wanna make sure I don't run into the walls, so I will temporarily put that right there. You can see that is a decent spot. Now I'm gonna add a few more holes by doing control D shift nudge nudge single nudge whatever you want i'm going to click back on this one and switch so you don't memorize the moves and bingo i have got a couple holes added i'm also going to cut in some square holes so i'm going to bring this out i'm going to stretch it to crazy villain once again i'm going to type 10 as well that's my go-to for this six millimeter hole so i'm going to put one right here I'm going to do Control D. I'm going to move it over here, and just for giggles, I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees. Super cool trick. If you hold Shift, it automatically goes 45 degrees at a time, which is pretty darn nifty. So the game is going to start back in this area. So I'm going to put the ball here so you can see the idea. You can arrange these however you want to make your course super awesome. I'm going to also add a triangular hole. I'm going to bring this out. Let's look at it from a corner. Let's use that awesome shift rotate. So I'm holding shift, snap, snap. It only takes two clicks to get it to the exact rotation I want. D to drop. I'm going to squeeze it, bring it over, make it a hole. I do want to make sure I keep it close to 10 so it fits really nice and still will let the ball in if you run into it. Friends, you can adjust these at will trying to make your course extra awesome. I'm also going to add little walls. So I'm just going to simply bring in the rectangle. I'm going to choose a wall thickness of two. I'm going to use the black handle. Notice if you do the white handle, it does two directions at once. Right there is undo, or you can do control Z. If you grab the black handle, it only goes in one direction. And I'm going to choose to only make these five high. That'll stop it, but you'll still be able to see where you want to go. So I'm going to let people get close to the corner, black handle to shrink it down, control D. I'm going to put another one of these this way so you can't just directly go into the project. You can nudge those with your arrow keys or you can just move them where you want. All right, I do want to make sure I don't have an easy way in here. So I'm going to stretch that all the way up so it's almost touching. And then I also want to block this edge. I'm going to block it with this shape. 
That means if you follow that edge, it'll run down in. I'll let you move over this way a little, and then I'm also going to put a little block down here. Let's do Control D, couple shift nudges, and then once again, shift rotate for that 45 degree nudge. I think that might give too easy of a runway, so I'm actually going to change it to a custom one, where if you bump off it, it puts you right down into the triangle. Not the most friendly project, but doggone it, I'm trying to make something where it's a little bit of a challenge. That's what's fun though, is you can adjust this to get it the exact way you want. We can also add other custom shapes. Watch this, I'm gonna put the work plane right here and let's add this star that pops up. I'm gonna hold down shift and make it kind of tiny. Let's rearrange and this will be sticking above the project. And I'm gonna put it right there just so it bounces things around a little bit more. Have fun though, experiment, see just how up. This is where, friends, you get to have a blast as you make yours unbelievably cool. Friends, when you're happy, we simply move this piece away, make sure the ball is out of the way, and then we need to grab all the parts that'll be on that top. When you select them all, make sure you miss the other shapes hit group, and you will have made your game board. All right, friends, so let me show you how we assemble. First, work plane, which is the letter W on top, Click that rail, hit D, select the two of them. We're going to choose a line. We want the center and the center. Sometimes that makes a lot more sense if you click the corner of the cube. Now we want to put this on top, but we want it to print well. We're going to make it print well with some sweet supports. When you bring this out, change the bottom to 2.5, which will give us a diameter of 5, and then also make your top radius 1 and then change the height to eight and press enter so it'll match that shape now we're going to add three of these in a row we're going to do control d shift nudge a couple extra nudges and one more control d and then we're going to select those by doing shift select control d shift nudge and control d those are only temporary and let me show you why we're going to hit w for work plane click on our other shape D for drop shift select either of the yellow choose a line make the yellow the boss and go center and center so we've got our awesome supports but they don't always line up with where the part was because of our course so just use your arrow keys to nudge them into place so they're all touching somewhere. One really cool trick is to hit T for transparent so you can see how they're lining up. I'm going to put that one right there. Those look really, really good. I've got these all blocked off so that it's going to work fine. That is looking spiffy. I'm going to click here and shut off transparency. And that top is supported. Now, friends, we're going to add rails really quick. Watch this. If we hit work plane up here on the top, click on our underneath part and do control D and then D for drop. Instant rails, but we do need to ungroup it and we need to delete this part. I'm also going to take this height and instead of making Z8, I am only going to make it five so it prints a little faster. I'm also going to take the wall and I'm going to make it 1.5 to make that a little faster as well. Note that would open up that corner, but watch this. I can close it real quick if I do shift shrink and make a small peg, say size 3 or something. It is a lot less than printing that whole rail and it stops people from going around that corner. Boom, that's all set. Now I want to do one more adjustment down here. I am going to double click to edit this and I'm going to click on the hole and I'm going to do control up one, two clicks. When we click away, you'll notice that that gives a little edge so that when the BB comes down through, it won't always run out. It'll get to that spot and then you'll have to shake it to get out the BB. Friends, it is time to send it to the 3D printer. I'm going to delete the ball because I don't need it anymore. Now when I hit export, I can choose everything in the design and we're going to export an STL. I store these in my 3D printing folder and this is going to be Marble Maze and this will be V2 because I have made modifications. 
friends, I'm using the GEE Tech A10T. Let's do file open. Once again, I keep them in my 3D modeling folder, so it is right there. And bingo, that's our project. Let's see how long it's going to take to 3D print. The estimate is an hour and 31. Let's check my settings. Three millimeter layers, wall thickness of 1.2, three walls, 0.8 for the top bottom thickness, 20% for the infill, 205 for the printing temperature, speed of 60, retraction of 16, and then I've got print cooling on, skirt, extruder, and bingo. Friends, we are ready to print via USB. So friends, there you have it, a fun ball maze. 3D printed, created with the Tinkercad softbox. Super cool tool, lots of options for it. I also have this project available for laser cutting. That does speed it up where this takes an hour and a half on a 3D printer. When you laser cut the different shapes, you can be done in about 15 minutes, which is slick as well. Friends, I hope you had an absolute blast and learned something along the way. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Don't forget you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when this brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.